Hello artists, how are you today? Stephanie Oni coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here near Willow Creek, California. Oz and I welcome you to the studio. Well, I ended up having to do a second intro on this because I gave you a lot of detail on how to make the background. I think the background is incredibly cool. And so I wanted to make sure that we had enough time to really go over the pop-up and kind of focus on that. So that is what we are doing today. So this is part two of If These Walls Could Talk. And uh, Patreons, of course, you will be getting the templates uh, for the little people. So um, that will be uh, posted for you coming up here. Oh, I think I have posted it for you last week. But um, yeah, that is using the Tim Holtz uh, Halloween ideology paper. Uh, here's the paper pack. Oh, things falling. Uh, this abandoned, sorry, this abandoned paper pack is so cool, you guys. It's fun. Uh, you know, he does limited editions every year, so that's his Halloween edition. And then this is the, um, worn wallpaper for this year, uh, Halloween edition. So those you can find online, they do go and sell out kind of quickly. So, um... I do have links to them, but sometimes you can find them less expensive in other places. But, you know, I really tweaked um, how to make uh, these pop-ups, but I wanted them to read as pop-ups when, you know, when you're opening the book this way, so that you can really, they're really just looking at you properly. So, um, I worked a lot with that, and I was successful. And then, of course, this is... Um, the canvas that we made last week. Um, also, since this background, sadly, I lost the video on it. So, um, but I did show you how I colored it. So I've got that's that part of the video, not the original. Anyway, <laughs> this is part two, how to make a pop-up. And these are kind of the little ghostly, if these walls could talk. I think it was super successful and I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, I hope you have a great day and uh, hey, if you can, please be sure to comment on the video, um, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, you know, all of those things do help for you to be able to support the channel. If you can join Patreon, I would highly appreciate uh, your support. We do two videos a week over on Patreon and these are full length videos, 20 to 30 minutes, if not a little bit longer. One on creating your first altered book and the second on masterclass. So um, I give a ton of images every single month. When you do join, you get access to all of the images that I've put on since the beginning of the channel. And you get access to all of the videos that I've put on since the beginning of the channel. You also get a piece of small art from me. And you also get a piece of um, high resolution art from me every single month that I would value at $75 or more. If I were to be selling that piece of artwork. So... You get so many goodies. I have a $10 tier and a $25 tier. With a $25 tier, you do get to have a 30-minute conversation with me every single month. I know you get tired of hearing about Patreon, but really, guys, your pledge does support um, me being able to continue to bring you daily videos, and it is super important. I try to give you a ton of great stuff. So thanks so much. Uh, you know, of course, those of you that can't afford it, I understand that you can't, but those of you that can, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, enough blah, blah, blah. Let's get down to the video on how to make a pop-up. Woo! It's cool. It's really a cool project, so I hope you enjoy. Be sure to comment. All right, we'll chat soon. Bye. Okay, guys, I am trying to figure out how to um, make this work. So this is uh, if these walls could talk. Uh, this is inspired by Suzette Morrow, M-O-R-R-O-W, Making Pop-Ups. She's a YouTube artist. And uh, I have done my little guy differently than what she has. So I just am trying to figure out by making this quick template how I want to do this. And um, oh, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. So maybe these could be the... Oh gosh, how do I want to do it? 
So what if we did something like, so here's the height of this other one. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to cut it out. So I also want to put this on my score sheet. I'm doing, let's see here, about there. Now where you're putting your indentations, that's where it's going to get folded under. We're going to do kind of interesting shapes on them. Now you see that I just kind of did these little round heads. You could easily do this with your X-Acto. In fact, it might be easier to do with your X-Acto. Okay, I have them all cut out. And um, yes, their little heads are bent, but we are going to fortify them. So um, hopefully it will all be okay. We are cutting both of these at little bit over 45 degree angles actually and then those haven't been folded in yet and you do want to take something to score that or not score it you want it to really be a good fold so you see how we have that shape underneath. Hopefully that's right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully we got it right. I think we've got pretty good. All right. We're going to, um, that's cool. We want to make this less noticeable though here. So we're going to cut that You want it to stand up more, you have to put them closer together. But you also have to worry about them coming out the top of the book. So I want them to kind of come just up that much so that you see them when you open it. I don't want you to have to hold the book, right? So this is so hard to show you guys, I'm sorry. When I open the book, I want them to stand up and see you. But I don't want them to stand up like that because you, can, you aren't gonna see them. I want them to stand up this way. So it's kind of a different type of pop-up. It's not like super exaggerated. stay in there enough. All right, so I'm going to trace these out for Patreons, and then um, I'm going to glue the paper onto it, and then I'm going to recut it. Um, I'll probably paint the back like a black. Black color would be best, something dark. Um, and I'm going to paint this dark or, you know, something with this coloring to it so that you don't notice it. Kind of that grayish color I think would be good. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I really, truly don't. So uh, we're just playing. We're experimenting. Uh, we are taking an idea and we're making it our own. Um, Suzette had, you know, a really cool idea with these little people. Um, now we're going to make it into our, our own story. So that's how you take inspiration from somebody. Um, she had her people done differently. Uh, and her people open differently than this. This I find is going, to, I feel is going to have them open more so that we can read them, right? I want the viewer to be able to see them properly. So uh, this is a heavy watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, I believe. 
So use something that is good and sturdy. I would use something more than just scrapbook paper. If you do use scrapbook paper, maybe if you glue a couple pieces together, that might work. Um, you know, if you have just single-sided, heavy scrapbook paper, cardstock, cardstock would be great. Chipboard's gonna be too heavy. You kinda have to have something that's sturdy, but not that's going to not be movable and bendable. All right, so I'm going to uh, get back to you in just a second. Okie dokie, so I got the first one done. I think it's pretty cool. It's just a bit load. I did, um, you know, take my watercolor brush pens and try to get all the whites, white spots covered up. These are the Arteza brush pens. I do love these. Highly recommend them. And uh, I think that's pretty darn cool. And that's gonna go right in there. Sweet. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing for these. I'm gonna cut them out and uh, we will come back. Okie dokie. Bye. Assembly happens. Now, the greater that you make that V, the more they will stand up. But I kind of want them to sit down a little bit so that when you open the book, you still see them. Instead of seeing the backs of them, I want you to see the fronts of them. So I think an angle like that is going to work better. Now remember, if you wanted a, a steeper angle for them to pop up more, you just have to make it a, a tighter V. A wider V will give you more space, which I want more space. Do it however you want it to work. Okay, this is, this is always a bit of a technical um, 
you know, process. I want them to sit like that. So that you see them. So we're gonna put some glue on here. We're gonna use our Fabri-Tac E6000, whatever you have that's your strongest glue. That's what you want to use on this. I feel like that's a little too much of a So this is only going to pop up basically that much. So what we want to do here, I'm guessing, I think this is what I want to do. Yes, close our book, let it grab its place, and then hold it up. And then push it down. So while it's not a huge pop-up, when you're looking at the book this way, you do get enough of a lift without it being standing straight up. I didn't want it to stand straight up. That's pretty darn perfect right there. And now we have to decide on the angles for this. Do we want them to stand up taller? Do we want them to sit down more? How do we want them to look? I think kind of having them right behind them would be really interesting. Making sure that our fold is nice and tight here. We're going to glue this guy down at approximately the same angle, I think. <laughs> I love it that I sound so definitive. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I know I shouldn't keep saying that because. I'm the expert here, but we are, um, you know, working on a new process again. So, um, I just, I just hope that it works, right? Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take my Stabilo and work on trying to get this all to kind of blend in. And I'll also be taking the Arteza watercolor brushes and doing the same thing. We're wanting to kind of give it a little shadow. In fact, we'll take our purple here. 
Now this will contaminate your brushes. This purple is about dead. So I'm able to, there we go. I wouldn't suggest doing that with your brushes. Um, again, this purple is almost empty, so I use it more as a tool than just a brush. You know, I want a lot of stabilo under here. I also want to just get any white parts that are remaining. I've gotten most of them. So again, it's not like it's a huge pop-up. You can make it more drastic, um, absolutely. Uh, I did not want it to be super drastic. I wanted them to just pop up and say hello from where, th where they were at. Okay, and then um, looking at underneath of here is gonna be kind of tough to get to. So I guess maybe put the back one on first. It makes sense. Uh, just putting a little bit of water on that again. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now that has kind of a weird shadow under it. Okay, artists, there it is. Again, this is uh, influenced by Suzette Morrow, but uh, definitely 100% made it my own. Um, I love this kind of... Um, if these walls could talk. I love how it turned out. I think it is um, very effective and uh, the pop-up amount is just right for me for what I wanted for my book and um, again I did adjust the tabs I think from the way that she did it. I watched hers a couple times couldn't quite get it um, the way that she had it but this way it works wonderful for me. And pop-ups are a great element in our books. I mean, look at how cool that is. I truly, truly, truly love it. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so the way the reason why this feels a little bit off uh, uh, lopsided too is that this one is shorter on this side than this side. So it feels like it's a little bit off balance, but that was due to, um, you know, I could have had another little person over here which would have made this as long as that and that would have made the difference uh, I don't mind it being the way that it is I kind of wanted to have you know a little family over here and then another little family over here so uh, that's that's why it is the way it is I think it's super cool that backgrounds awesome I think that's an a plus right <laughs> Okay, guys, I hope you have a great day, and um, we will chat soon. See you next week. Actually, see you tomorrow. <laughs>